everyone. Here is the rear brake caliper for my bike. Uh, 1982, hasn't been used in probably 12 years. Look at, con look at the condition of this banjo connector bolt, whoops. So see, there's the hole for the fluid, but look at where the other, need to majorly clean that. Here we have mounting bolts. This one just slides in and it screws into the bracket. This one screws into the caliper. Yep, gotta clean those all up. Now I've gotta remove all this. Here are the pads and the pistons. So I did spray some of this stuff in here. I'll spray a little more to help loosen things up to aid in removing these. Let me just get it all around, get everything in here. Got these lock, these pins right here. Got this bolt. Spray some inside there. Uh, Well, actually, let me take the cap off of this thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's got a little, a little devil do you inside. Oh, one more. Now let's grab a screwed up driver. Filbert at that. Let's see how this. All right, good. Remember that screw holds this guy on. All right. Now we've got to get this bolt. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. Tell me, loosen, loosen. Okay, here we go. All right. That was in there pretty good. Slide that up. Slide that out. Yeah. Now, in theory, well, these things, all right, I'm gonna have to persuade them through. So, I'm gonna have to tap them through. All right, good. So, I've gotta persuade these out. Well, here's one. We got a center punch here. Well, we got a punch. No, it's not a center punch, it's a punch. And we got this cute little claw hammer. Uh, it just hit the bench. Okay, probably have to persuade them the rest of the way. Oops, okay. Yeah, we got that spring in there that's... Okay, take that guy out. <laughs> All right. See, look, a lot of life left in that. See, yeah, uh, that's what happened there. Now it'll slide right out. No, it won't. Persuade it some more. There it is. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, let's get this thing spring out of here. Next step is to get those out. These pistons can be, they've been, you know, they've been there for 12 years in that position. So I'm going to uh, have to put some compressed air into this. That's why I kept the 
bleeder valve on because I need to pressurize that. But the thing is, is I need to catch these, especially if only one moves. Then, pff, So I need to control how far these come out and when, you know, gonna control them from both. So, whoops, what I'll probably do is utilize this and possibly, yeah, if I can get a clamp here, or I can do two clamps, just loosen them, you know, just let it come down to here. And so when they, I can control how they pop out. All right, that's what I'll do. Let me set up those clamps. I have mounted the caliper into the vise. Here are our two pistons. Now, there are basically two ways to get these things out of here. One of them is to pressurize it and hopefully push them out with pressure. Now, being two pistons, you've got to be careful how, because you don't want one to come out and the other not. So you have to regulate or control how they come out. But seeing as how this thing is has not been used in over a decade, I am going to do method number two, which is an inside wrench. This happens to be a cobalt, but here's an inside wrench. Now this is offset. This sent this piece right here can change. Change the diameter. So when you spin this. It causes this to spread out. No, I'm not spread out. You can see it's concentric. No, it's just offset. This is offset, so you can go as far as that. Now, the problem is the ID of this is greater than the OD of this. So what I did was take a piece of half inch. I happen to have this half inch, but, you know, by a 16th inch wall aluminum and I made what I guess I'm going to call a shim now I put the shim inside somehow get in there see now I have the shim in place now set this to zero more or less like that let's put this in okay there we go now take the box end and put it put it on the um, the wrench now the thing here is the way it's in the vise I need to actually go that way I need to go clockwise because it grabs better here than there because I've got this tab so you know I've got it snuggled down pretty well so but you know the piston is obviously not threaded so it doesn't matter which direction as long as I can spin it and pull at the same time so with the box end I can pull as well as spin it so let's give it a try now I did fill the inside with this stuff this is awesome just as good if not better than PB blaster P blaster however you want to say that so this is all coated and it inside as well so let's see. Let me go ahead and get this. In. All right, look at that it's spinning. Right. And now I am also pulling as I'm spinning. Let me reset this. Well, gotta be careful. You snuggle that some more. All right, it is coming out. Let's see. Can I go backwards a little? Nope. Some more. No. Oh. It's coming out. Back in there. Oops. Lost grip. Let me reset this. All right, look at that, almost. Maybe this last time here. 
All right. Next step for this guy is to clean. Get these sides really well, really good. One to go. Oops, gotta go this way. Now, box end again. Oh, look at this one moving easily. Now, oh, look at that. These have been sitting in there a long time. Look at this. Look, oh, well. Oh, okay, good. Guess I need to loosen this up each time to be on the safe side. wrench. Yeah, there's the shim. Oops. Now, get this out the rest of the way. All right. Got them both out. Didn't hurt them. Oh, yeah, look at that goober. You know, that's the <laughs> brake fluid side. But look at these. Oh, well, gonna polish up the outside. Here they both are. So what I need to do is clean all this up. This is where the banjo plug, this is the main break in. Here's the bleeder. Take the brake hone and hone those two cylinders out. Take the Dremel with the uh, water, with the uh, wire brush, the kind with the cone, and clean all inside there. Get up all around as much as I can. All right. Cool. Next step. not good well granted it's on the outside it looks like someone actually used tools on this in the past probably not the first time it's been out but it's all pitted see well this was on the outside I said See, this half, it's going to be easy because that's always inside. This, depending on the uh, wear on the, the pads, is out further, out in the elements. This is in brake fluid. So I'm going to clean this side off first to get all good and then concentrate on cleaning that. Okay, there's multiple things when you're doing working with a wire wheel. Straight on is cuts deeper, stronger, it's more force, if you will, because the, the wires only deflect in one direction. Off to the side, it deflects in two directions, so it's actually softer if you go along the side. It doesn't cut as aggressively. Just spot on directly, it's more aggressive. It's cleaned up nicely. I mean, it's pitted here, but like I guess if this more on the outside, and there's two seals, so we should be good. All right. So yeah, look at that pitting.
now that I have the pistons out, it's time to remove these seals. All right, all kinds of different ways of doing this. I'm not trying to save these because I can get the, I do have these. So, there's one. Whoops, there's the other one cylinder. Here is cylinder number, well, the other cylinder, second cylinder. Okay, now I need to clean those grooves out and so here I have a little wire brush on a good old Dremel. Now I'm going to clean out these uh, grooves. <laughs> I have to, the problem is with this vibration is I've got this thing extended so much. Let me see if I can uh, shorten that some. Plus also this is wearing lopsided. <laughs> Got the home set up inside this lower um, cylinder. Got some brake fluid here that I'm going to use to lubricate it. And Cleaned it up. All right, so let me turn it so we can see. Get the light on it. Ah, much better. Much better. Yep, gotta run that a little more. Not worry about the very back. extra light in there all right yeah see how that that upper one came out really good that lower one I might do a little more I've got uh, I can clean the back I'm not well yeah I, I'll clean the back with the brushes but looks good to me So this thing got a bath in the ultrasound, ultrasonic cleaner, with heat. Covered up anything threaded or, obviously these two go into the chambers, don't want any paint in there, don't want any paint on the threads inside here. This is rubber, don't want any on that. So the rest of it's gonna get paint. Well, hello everyone. Here in front of me, I have the rear brake caliper for my 1982 Honda Goldwing. People have been asking for what part numbers certain things are, so here are the pad, you know, pads, inner seal, outer seal, banjo connector, uh, washers. 
So I did clean paint. I honed out the cylinders with a brake hone. Cleaned the retaining pins. These pins help hold the uh, brake pads in. This steadies the pins on the other side, eh, whatever. This is a dust collector, <laughs> dust shield, I guess. That's what I'm calling it, brake dust shield. All right, let's go ahead and install the seals and the pistons. Now that the new seals and pistons in, next step is to put the pads. This is spring. It helps keep the pads quiet. Loaded up, I should say. Let's go ahead and take one of these pins. It goes in there. Now let's feed this guy on there. Come on. There you go. Now let's do this one as well. Okay. Now if we push that all the way through, there you go. Now, the spring is pressed up against these, so when I put the second one in, I've actually got to push these down. Let's go ahead. Yep, there you go. Now we gotta push them down. You see this? So you gotta push it down. You see that? So you push it down to where you need to get that pin through. Okay. We're seated down fully. Now we've got them sticking out like that. So here's a retaining pin, I guess. Or a retaining. That holds them in place. <laughs> Now go ahead and put that on there. I'm sure there's a torque spec for that, but I don't know what it is. Not gonna look it up. It does not matter. Okay, so there we go. Eh, I just put a little of this schmutz on there. You can do what you want on that. You can put a little grease. I'll finish these up once it's in place. This guy, I'm pretty sure it goes like this. So if you're looking on the left side of the bike, this guy actually comes... And you got a bolt there and you got a bolt there. But this is how it looks. <laughs> 